Well, hello, hello. Welcome to my channel. It's a Saturday morning. I'm out for a bike ride. Temperature out here is minus 18 degrees this morning, which is, believe it or not, a lot milder than it has been pretty much all week. But let me tell you, it's still not really comfortable cycling weather. But because of a recent snowfall, all the uh, polished ice and uh, you know, this rough stuff that we had on all the streets, well, it's gotten covered with more snow. And it's uh, been cold all the way through. So as of right now, with my bike here in these streets, I have a lot better traction. Oh, this asshole, he doesn't know that he's supposed to leave me a meter and a half to pass. Or I think it's a meter in a residential street like this. And it's slippery here and he still doesn't uh, get this, he still doesn't get this right. So, yeah, forgive me for uh, ranting about this, but it's, it's just, you know, it puts my life at risk. And he doesn't even realize that, which to me means that he shouldn't have a driver's license. Simple as that. The city of Edmonton has recently passed a bylaw making it mandatory in residential streets to leave one meter between a bicycle and a car when passing. On major artery roads, this increases to one meter and a half. In the winter time, when it comes to those trails in the river valley, I mean, you never know what condition they're in and how safe it is. It's really, really coldish. Oh, there's somebody with a dog. Like, can they ever go somewhere on a leash? Yeah, the light is absolutely fantastic here, but it is just too cold to do much of anything. And really the only reason I came out here was to do a little bike riding uh, for exercise because it's hard when it's this cold all week to get out of the house and, and do something. And I find it really important, uh, number one, to keep healthy physically, and number two, mentally as well. I mean, you could do a lot of work and accomplish a lot inside the house, sitting on the computer, which I have this week, but it is not the same as being out here and actually enjoying the fresh air. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an update about what's going on regarding my stolen truck and my activities aside from making YouTube videos. Well, let's have a seat over there. Like, there's actually a dry and uh, snow-free spot on this bench there. That's pretty cool. What I wanted to talk about, yeah, there was a major stolen goods bust in Camrose this week, last week, I think it's still ongoing. There was something on the news on the 29th of November. We're now the, I think the 3rd of December. So it's very recent. And from what I've seen, they found uh, like hundreds of uh, stolen goods, vehicles, tractors, you name it. I looked at some of the news reports on CTV and stuff and uh, I have not spotted my truck there's a chance that it's not among these goods but i'm gonna give you a bit of information about this this kind of thing there's a guy who's got like 17 businesses if i got this right like it, it's not a poor guy that uh was basically busted for having all these the stolen property 
I don't understand uh, why, how an individual like that gets caught up in uh, uh, the stolen goods business. Is that how he acquired all his uh, stuff? Like, is he a career criminal? Another thing that's been bothering me about all this is that there's a Facebook group local here for Alberta, for the whole province, about stolen vehicles. And there's a common thread that uh, if somebody's vehicle gets recovered, the nightmare actually uh, gets worse because usually the vehicle is in very bad condition. Some people mention that dealing with the insurance company is actually worse than having your vehicle stolen. I'm not going to say uh, thank goodness or anything like that, no. I kind of wish I would have had some insurance coverage for my, my truck even though uh, when I think logically, do the math, I mean over the years. I've had this truck since 2013, that is nine years. So how much money would I have paid extra in insurance coverage? And then how much would have, how much of that would I have recovered because my truck got stolen? And then when the truck would have been uh, recovered, like uh, what's the deal then? Would the insurance company own my truck? Probably. But yeah, this is a 1997 vehicle. And even though it was in very good running condition with relatively no, low mileage, I think the market value of a 1997, there is a certain limit to it, especially if it's a work truck, you know, it's not been restored or anything like that. So uh, yeah, that's the thing, you know, how much money do you want to pay up front in case this kind of thing happens in insurance costs? Well, then of course, yes, there's the tools and I uh, have not uh, received a penny for that. Got a lot of power tools in there. And uh, yes, uh, it would take me quite some, uh, it would take me quite a while to replace all these. And mm, so it's a problem. Anyways, I have not uh, found my truck. It has not been recovered at this point. I am hopeful in a way, but uh, I've, I've been putting, I've been setting my focus on other things, to be honest. I am studying for the Canadian Advanced Drone Certification which I believe would give me some credibility in starting up my own business for uh, flying drones, producing footage for whoever needs it. Also, uh, perhaps creating better uh, stock footage because I have a drone that I ordered and I know it's, it seems like counterintuitive because my income is highly uncertain, but sometimes it is good to invest some money into your future so i have ordered a bigger drone that has uh, far greater capabilities than my dji mini 2 even though i enjoy flying the mini 2 and it gives me a lot of freedom i can fly it wherever i want almost and also it is legal to fly it in mexico or in places like a lot of places around the world so I'll definitely be keeping that and using it a lot. But my new drone that I'm going to receive in a matter of days now, it's a, it's called, a, it's a DJI drone. It's a DJI Air 2S. It was Cyber Monday. I got a pretty good deal, I believe. And uh, I will have some uh, ND filters with it. So it's good for video footage. Then, um, I ordered some extra batteries for it, so I'm, I'm equipped the same way like uh, with the Fly More kit. And well, the, uh, the idea is to, to make a lot better footage and uh, to get into drone photography a bit more. I've, I've kind of made a commitment there, otherwise I wouldn't have spent the money. So my website will be uh, transforming a bit, you know, there will be more services offered that, uh, that I do. I am also considering offering some video editing services. I don't know how many of my videos you've seen. You can probably tell that I have a bit of a passion for uh, manipulating reality for uh, creating footage out of stock footage for playing around with it. And um, 
Perhaps there's a market for producing unique clips. This is all stuff that is uh, still in the, the planning stages. I haven't really gotten into uh, redesigning my website or anything, but uh, in the next uh, weeks and months, this is what I'm up to. Yeah, and when my truck finally gets recovered, I will probably park it for a while and then we will see what it needs in terms of repair and perhaps uh, setting it up for more handyman work. <laughs> I don't know. Like there's a lot of things to think about. So that's where I'm at. Just thought I'd give you a good uh, morning talk here. It's cold in Edmonton. It's not that uncomfortable actually. But I'm going to be hopping on my bike and uh, going for a good ride before breakfast. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching.